and we are live at day seven um obviously i've got a different background behind me i'm actually back in the neighborhood um my kids just around the corner so super excited about counting down the hours to finally spend seven days with them um this is school holidays um but what i'm excited about right now is having to chat to my one of my best mates um for now going on 16 years um he catches me on this each time because um yeah, I say five, I say eight, but it's actually 16. I actually did the mass today, Kurt. Um, uh, good. I, uh, I met Kurt. Uh, he came into the flight center when I was a travel agent, pretty raw, um, trying to sell him uh, a travel package. Um, Kurt will give you a bit of a, his background, but Kurt is in a wheelchair, and um, he wanted to go on an island holiday. And he's like, make sure it's got accessibility. And I was just a young guy trying to sell travel, and I'm like, yeah, there's a great deal. I sent him to a resort with no pass, no wheelchair Stands everywhere yeah so being vulnerable it was uh that's where our relationship started and um you'll uh, still hold me to that every day but um <laughs> good, man. thanks thanks for your time and thanks for um vulnerability and in, in advance on the next 30 minutes um why don't you just share a bit about uh so today's around resilience and i just said to kurt around uh i was listening to man's search for meaning um if anyone um, has read it it's a great book if you haven't um it puts life in perspective really and the book's really about um a psychologist that uh went into auschwitz and uh he actually survived and talked about his whole time and there's a lot around psychology and mindset and everything like this um and resilience obviously curtis um he l literally does live a life that i kind of aspire sometimes like you've traveled the world you've won gold medals you've been to olympics mate you've been a presenter on tv but you've done a lot and you inspire me daily so and thanks for being a good mate but maybe just give some some context and a bit of a background on um your life celebrate it man and go okay 30 minutes is all we got right that's so right bro. Give, you the, give you the short version amen yeah, um yeah hi, g'day guys my name my name's curtis um steve likes to call me kurt not many other people call me kurt actually but um you know whatever um yeah i i'm a kiwi living um in australia right now um been here for quite a few years i live up on the central coast which is just north of sydney and um this is my home i love it here um i'm married with two uh young boys i've got a um nearly four year old and a 15 month old and a beautiful wife georgia and we're outdoor people so this environment for us is just perfect we've got you know numerous beaches just down the road we've got you know national parks surrounding us and um it's just a it's a great place to live and um i'm really happy that i found this place to get here uh, it's been definitely a, a fair a fair journey um so like steve said uh, um, i live my life from a wheelchair at the uh, ripe age of 15 years old i had a rugby league accident um playing in the grand final um when you're 15 years old you know you feel bulletproof so for me um when the two biggest guys in the field were running at me the only choice that i really had in my head was run even harder at those guys and when i got to them i ducked my head and of course when you do that you you, you lose your um line of vision um i misjudged it and i slammed my head into one of the guys sides and instantly broke my neck becoming a, a cervical six cervical seven quadriplegic so i broke my neck in um in no uncertain ways and did a pretty good job at it too so from my chest down i've had no feeling and no movement even my hands are affected as well so um living to learning to live my life with uh, a disability like that was definitely um uh, you know a challenge and i think that's probably where my uh, my journey of resilience kind of started you know a tragic accident like that you've got one of two ways to go. You can either go up or you can go down and wallow and, and look at, you know, all the things that you've uh, lost in life. And so for me, I think it was uh, just an innate kind of belief in myself that I, I, I looked forward. I looked at, well, what are these new, op new opportunities that are going to come about from this new situation? And um, that's kind of how I looked at life from that point on. It's like, okay, well, I can't play rugby league anymore. That was the sport that I loved. It was my absolute passion. I loved nothing more than playing rugby league and it was taken away from me. But, you know, looking forward, there's all sorts of beautiful opportunities for me to embark on. 
and it was um, it was when the the Paralympians from the Barcelona Paralympics in 1992 came to my rehab center while I was there at the time. That was probably the spark that I needed to get back on track and give myself some new goals. I, I couldn't be a, a a rugby league player anymore, but you know what? I could possibly be the best wheelchair rugby player that I could be. So that was the start of that journey, mate. And um, just in a nutshell, from that point on, um, I dedicated my life to sport. And um, yeah, I can bear the fruits of that that effort and that labour with uh, a gold medal, a couple of bronze medals, four Paralympic Games, representing two different countries. So um, that chapter of my life is now closed. <laughs> and um, now I'm uh, a different... I guess I'm a different person in some ways, yeah. And and with that um, resilience, mate, um, I don't know, resilience is such a powerful word or, or courage, but we need to understand that resilience is not always there, is it? Like we, we, we've shared some times where I've gone into, uh, I think I'm resilient, and then you could drop back down and, and there's these peaks and flows and and different milestones and chapters. And um, maybe I might, I might bring up when... Um, like any professional athlete, um, you were a professional athlete, um, been to Olympics and then having that transition period where you had to say enough's enough. I'm not an athlete. And then you go through this. For me, it was business, right? I had, I was selling yeah. business is like exiting being a professional sport. How do you deal with that resilience when you stop being a professional athlete and the next chapter? Mate, the, the first thing you do is you get help. You cannot do this alone. You know, it's a it's a massive shift in your life. It's a massive shift in your mindset because you know you know what it's like. You go from uh, well, as an elite athlete, I was told where to go, what to do, how to do it, where to be, what to eat, how to perform. My goals were set for me all along the way. I didn't have to do any of that. And there was always targets to meet, and there was always people around me to support me and to push me forward. The day that I retired, I'm sitting at home going, well. Everyone else is either at work or at training, and here I am. Just what, what am I supposed to do here? And um, that was a that was a really big hole that I fell into, and it took me a very long time to get back out of it, mate. And um, I went through numerous uh, psychologists, depending on you know what I needed at the time. But the key with my message here, mate, is uh, I didn't sit on the couch and wallow in it. I actually actively sought help. I read books. I did courses. I talked to people about it. And I tried different things as well. It's like that old saying, you know, you're trying it on a hat and if it doesn't fit, you know, you're trying another hat until you find the one that does fit. And throughout my life, I've tried many different things to replace the elite sport that I once had and the identity that I created through that sport. And I think that I'm still going through that, mate. It's a, it's a journey and it's not something you can just snap your fingers and go, right, oh, I'm no longer an elite athlete or a business person anymore. I'm something else. It just happen, has to happen over time. What, a, what a, something that just inspires me all the time, and, and Kurt definitely does live the life of experiments. And um, something um, that probably gets in my way is um, perfectionism before momentum. And what I do love about Kurt is, as he said, like he hasn't dropped about thirty things that he's done in his life, whether it's traveling around the world, um, putting a spotlight on. Um, and it's called, it's called Attitude TV and, and spotlighting the amazing work that's happening around the world with um, disability and people really evolving and becoming incredible people in their own right with this life-changing accident or trauma that they've had. Um, and then we've, we've, uh, we've tracked the back of Fiji on the back of a camel. Um, he's then written a book. Like what inspires me is the, the willingness to give shit a go. And where does that come from? Was that before the accident or afterwards? Like the whole, you're just willing to try things and, and perfectionism doesn't get in the way of your experiments. No, I look, perfection definitely isn't in my vocabulary. Um, it's, it, it is a, perfectionism is a disability, mate. Like, um, yeah, you, even I look at, you know, um, being a father and striving to be the best father that I can and the, 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 the pressure that I put on to be, you know, um, you know that, that perfect dad, it's just never going to happen. Um, there's too many variables in place. There's just, you know, it's just impossible. It's an impossible dream, mate, to be perfect. And so with me, 
Yeah, I, I'm not sure where it came from, but it's um, just one of those things that it, if something's not working for me, I, I don't do it. Like I just stop doing it and I move on to something else that, that may work for me. And, um, you know, throughout my life, there's been many things that haven't worked. There's been many mistakes that I've made and, um, you know, I've been on the hype train for so many different ideas and, and the concepts that I want to bring to the world and that sort of stuff and they've fallen flat. But um, I've just always managed to get back on the bike and, and, and try something else because who knows what's around that little corner. You know, that might be the little utopia that you're looking for. Um, for you, mate, you know, what you found with Wander and Wonder you know, that, that aligns totally with who you are, you know, aligns with your values and, and what you want to give to people. And it also matches with your skills as well and all these beautiful things that you've learned along the way. And um, that's, a, that's a real gift to be able to have that. There's a lot of people out there that, that haven't got that and they're yeah, struggling. I think we take it for granted. I definitely do sometimes that um, the whole gratitude journal and getting up every morning, it's it, – it has and always always has been um, a struggle for me to really dive deep and get that gratitude, and it's such a buzzword. Um, but for me, it's I don't know. There's different types of gratitude, and as you said, like I just take my life sometimes, and also the work that I do as um, just run of the mill stuff. So thanks for pointing out because curiosity and, and wonder all throughout my life, I was uh, kind of told uh, focus on one thing. Um, stop wandering and and um, trying some things, and uh, it's only literally the last couple of years where we started wonder and wonder that it's actually a superpower. So thanks for bringing up and like oh, it's exciting, you know. The other way is how boring is that? Yeah, you know, the other way that you were talking, you know, curiosity. How how beautiful is curiosity? Mm. How um the curiosity. How do how do you how does it how do you spark it? within yourself to so, um I, I think i think it's just a, a it's it's a decision yeah. you know it's a choice really um what, what do you what do you, you what do you say to people that um because as i said a lot of people right now we're going through a massive transition uh phase in the next yeah huge 12 18 months um we were already in that phase in regards to people were thinking twice about their job. Is it really lighting them up? Is it bringing them joy, fulfillment? The, the crazy word that actually pisses me off sometimes is this whole happiness buzz, because we can't be happy all the time. So people are already thinking that way, but to be, to move from a, I'll make a choice to transition to, oh shit, my industry is gone potentially. I need to transition now. Um, not many people have had to go through that. You have with that, um, with that accident, you you yeah. were forced to transition. So, what are some learnings that you can take out of forced transition? As you said, the help thing. Um, so many Kiwis and Aussies, and you know, it's so hard that we wear this mask and we're not willing to ask for help. Um, when you're forced to ask for help, just do it, don't you? So, yeah, yeah exactly. Learnings out of that forced transition that you had to go through um, to work out what we oh. did. Look, look, I think um, the two first things that you really need to do is the first thing is just need to take a deep breath. <laughs> you, know, you need to need to calm the farm a little bit. Um, you need to get those cortisol levels down um, and need to start thinking uh, clearly and, um, and, and not try and force anything. Um, I forgot what the second thing was I was going to say. Um, yeah, t take your breath, mate, and... Um, I think also, yeah, that, that's it. It's come back to me. Is um, you've got to be kind to yourself. Like there's a there's a lot of pressure. You know, imagine being a single mum and you've just lost your job and you've got rent to pay and all that sort of stuff. Like, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but you do have to be kind to yourself. You have to stop that voice, you know, on, on your shoulder, um, belittling you and 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 talking, you know, all sorts of negative crap about what your situation is. But then you also you have to be proactive about it. We can't rely on governments. Like at the rate they're going at the moment, the, the governments are going to run out of money, and they're not going to be able to help everybody. So it really does come down to what are you willing to do, and, and what kind of road are you willing to travel to to get back on track, to um, you know, to embrace this opportunity. Like 
if you think about, you know, the amazing things that, that could possibly come from this event, you know, how many people do you know right now that are stuck at home and they're working from home and probably enjoying that a whole lot more than sitting in traffic for an hour, driving to, you know, an office or a job that they don't particularly feel comfortable in? Like, well, I think well, that state people, of the world is going to change. Well, people alone are already getting back on average, it's an hour each way. So on, on average, that's 10 hours a week. They're getting back a day a week just in, in traffic. So um, yeah, this whole togetherness and people being around. But actually, the conversation yesterday I had was with the intimacy expert and the, the whole being together for that amount of time is a new paradigm for people as well. They're not used to being at home. So yeah, this whole, yeah, it's going to be interesting what comes out of it. But as you said, um, trying to be optimistic and, and be excited about what we have right now. Um, I've got a conversation coming up in the next few days um, around where my vulnerability started and it was um, with Kat Hoke, uh, who runs an amazing program called yeah. 2.0 and going to prison and, and what prisoners that have done 20 years in prison would, that were never coming out, what they would do to be at home right now with their family. Yeah. Ooh, and yeah. uh, have a lot of time for some of the people doing the work and they're doing the deep work. Um, not all of them, but uh, the ones that we met, well, jeepers, we talk about doing the work internally, those guys are doing it. So um, yeah, yeah, we digress a little bit. Um, but um, what's, um, what's keeping you excited right now? Um, well, nobody knows what's going to happen, mate, right now. You know, here we are, we're sitting in... Um, pretty isolated times in terms of being able to go outdoors and, and interact with people. And for me and my business, you know, I, I'm restricted in doing, um, you know, deliveries and stuff, but, you know, I, I sell wheelchairs for a living and help people to, um, you know, get the equipment that they need to live, a, you know, uh, the amazing life that they want to live. And that's kind of been a little bit hamstrung, but what, what's getting me excited is, um, is how everything's going to change once everything starts to settle down. Like that's, I think that's exciting. I think we needed a change. I think we were we were so stuck in some really damaging ways, you know, our, our, our materialistic, hedonistic attitude towards stuff, you know. I think that's um, – that. I think that hopefully will change and our relationships within our, within our families and our, our attitudes towards um, being home and not, you know, um, working for a living um, and you know, living to work kind of thing. Um, whole busyness we just and uh, mate I'm, I put my hand up I'm like trying to navigate obviously being in startup mode right now and um, I'm fortunate and grateful in, in that capacity that I don't uh, I had a call with a mutual friend of ours Jamie who um, has got a very successful business and yeah. have cancelled 65 groups um, and the outfall of that is just like I'm just like I'm here for you man like if you need to talk about yeah. these things but hearing the optimism in his voice as well obviously it is there's the ups and downs and we all share them but um yeah be able to pivot to purpose which my mate zark talks about is like it really gives us this permission or it's the catalyst to, to change the change we work the change on how busy we are not to just fill out days on I'm pretty excited about it but it's hard for me to do you know I've got ADHD and just trying to sit on my ass for 10 minutes is, is, t is tough work so um what do you what would you like to see that comes out of this around accessibility um because obviously in your space there's a lot of reliance on different things and mechanisms and services and everything like that do you think there's going to be a wake-up call in that space as well uh i hope so bud because i think um you know, it, it's not a news item that people really want to want to look at at this stage. But um, I think if the, the media decided to dive a little bit deeper into the disability community and how this COVID-19 is affecting that very vulnerable, um, you know, part of our society, uh, I think they'd be astounded at um, how much trouble these guys are in, mate. Like, and there definitely needs to be a change because I think... Uh, that sector of society has been forgotten. You know, just for me, example, um, you know, I know everyone's going on about all the um, the hand sanitizer and stuff like that, but for me to go to the bathroom, for me to go to the toilet, I have to use a catheter to empty my bladder, 
to do a catheter, I need to wash my hands with sanitizer. I've been doing this for years. Yeah. And when I go to my local supplier to get some hand sanitizer because, you know, I've run out, there's none there, mate. You know, there's just none there. Like that's an essential need for me. And there's been no, there's been no thought about, no. about that. You know, um, that's just one aspect of it all. Um, a lot of people that I know have got support workers and support workers are being restricted or they're choosing not to put themselves in that kind of environment. And um, so people with disabilities are, are screwed without their support yeah. workers. You can't get your support um, to pick you up and take you out for a walk or as we yeah. talked about before the technology a couple of days ago, it's like the, the actual mental toll. Everyone's talking about the economy and and companies closing. No one's talking, well, actually, uh, Todd Herman, a friend of mine in New York from Alter Ego, yeah. lost two friends this week to suicide. Oh, wow. Uh, because That's horrendous. Like, That's so sad. I don't know if we can recover from our, our business is gone. Um, yeah. Literally, the rug has been pulled out from it. It was not like September 11th that was... Like, I don't know when the, the thing that's the scary thing is the uncertainty right now and um, that no one can forecast of when this thing is going to end. But the mental toll that it's going to take and, yeah, this whole transition help services space is just going to, to blow up and how do we be there yeah. for people right now? So Yeah, yeah, t definitely people need to take action around that, you know, building that resilience and, um, and, and taking a step. You know, um, this could be devastating news to so many people and they could feel like they're so trapped and, yeah. and there's no other way out apart from, you know, like, like what you said, you know, taking their own lives, which is, um, you know, the saddest thing that I've heard today. It's just horrendous that someone would, would, would you know, do that. Um, and my heart goes out to those people that didn't have the help or they didn't feel they could, you know, get out of that problem. I think... Um, yeah, there's no there's no grand solution to it, mate. It's a it's a process, and um, we're all going to have to help each other out in this. Yeah. What's your definition of wonder? And then your definition. Wonder. Of wonder. What's wonder and curse life. Jeez, mate, I've got two young boys. Like, I just I don't have to go far to uh, you know to see my little boy pick up a book, even if it's upside down. You know, it's uh, and, and and look through the book, and his eyes are lighting up at at what he's seeing on the pages. You know, it's a it's those simple, simple things that um, that they teach you, you know, beautifully. And um, I've got it right in front of me, mate. It's um, it's happening around me all the time. Um, taking one, my kids to the beach and taking my kids to the beach and watching them explore the rock pools. Uh, I've got a wheelchair that it's got, you know, the big fat tires and uh, you know wheels that go on the front that um, help me across the sand so I can participate with them in these environments. And it's uh, so heartwarming. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, man. And uh, and wonder, which we are a little bit limited to right now. But what is wonder yeah. for you? Because I just think travel straight away. But I'm actually reframing that to go. How do I actually get this fix of wonder in my life? Curiosity. So yeah, what's what's wonder for you, mate? Yeah, wonder is um, taking a bit of a back seat at this stage. You know, I used to be a an avid traveller. You know, through my sport and. Um, you know, when we, before George and I had kids and stuff like that, we'd do some pretty amazing adventures and whatnot. And um, my life shifted from that that kind of side of travel a little bit more, and I'm exploring more now my my local environments. You know, the the beautiful beaches that we've got here, and the national parks, and the and the walkways and things like that. And um, and just breathing that fresh air, dude. It's just something that you've um, you've got to schedule into your week. You've got yeah. to be proactive in terms of making sure that you get it done. It's, it's as important as doing your taxes. It is. And uh, seeing so many people out walking in the neighbourhoods, so obviously I'm close to the beach and both places, whether it's Mangawai or Auckland and you're close to the beach, like, yeah, everyone said get out and get some steps in for the last five years. Naturally, the world's just getting people to do that. So uh, that's exciting. That's an exciting shift that we're just going through right now. Um I'm wondering what what you get out of it, mate, because you travel more than anybody I know, and you've done, you've met. Oh God, I can't even imagine the the the, the amazing people that you've met and the lessons that you've learned from them, and, and you've been really open to learning those lessons from these people, which is, you know, um, you know, makes it all so much more worthwhile. But what, why do you travel so much, mate? Um, 
why do I travel? Um, it's just seeing things in different perspectives. Yeah, it's like sometimes when we're when we're at home, sometimes we we get in the, the busyness and we don't get the pers- the perspectives, the um, looking from your phone to looking up. And as I think I said it in one of my talks to a bunch of young young people, is like, what happens when you travel somewhere on a plane and you come into land? Not many people are looking down at their phones. They're looking out at the destination, inspired to see what they might see, what they might hear when they land. And everyone, when they're getting off through the airport, they're all looking up. Like, I think you've seen the cycle of um, the evolution of the human. It's like gone from chimp to, and now we're like bending back over because we're looking at our phone. So for me, it's that, that curiosity. It's the, the universal permission to, try new things to have conversations with strangers um that you just feel more com- um, comfortable to do but maybe this right now is teaching us that it can all be done in our backyard um and i'm kind of with you on that um i had a conversation with a few people the last couple of days around tourism whether it was fiji airways or in new zealand is like what is tourism in the next 12 to 18 months it's definitely not long yeah. it's definitely not Aussies and Kiwis going to Europe, I don't think. Um, yeah. Because they are still epicenters. Who knows? Is this a virus? Is it a disease? Is yeah. it like AIDS? So I think tourism in our backyard, we can really work together like Anzacs um, to yeah. go between Australia and New Zealand and, and like you, go out and explore our own, our own areas, man. So that's kind of where, where I'm at with, um, with Wonder and Wonder. Um, but curiosity, it's, you can find it everywhere, whether it's, as you said, um, being able to experiment and try new things. So going back to learn um, how to cook, like I wasn't the uh, the best cook. And in chapter one, um, <laughs> I, with um, with Hayley, I didn't do too much cooking. But now <laughs> I actually found this love of cooking, not from cooking yeah, from scratch. Great. If a recipe is given to me and me yeah. get the ingredients, and I was like this aha moment. The other day when i'm like sarah gave me this uh recipe for fettuccine it's so simple i should be able to create it from start and yeah she gave me the recipe i followed the recipe and just going through that process of cooking and then at the end sitting down and eating something that you created super powerful so i think mm. by diving into these whether it's sitting down with my kids and building lego like it's people's creativity and innovation is going to be spurred by playing with kids and trying new things by being at home so yeah just excited to see what comes off the back end people are going to be leaning into that project that they've talked about doing for ages like yeah. our friend tucker from um scribe media like he's like his vision is everyone has a story within them and it needs to be shared in a book and his company yeah. takes your idea from idea to book he had he right. gave everything away free and 4,000 people signed up to share their story. I think that's pretty freaking awesome is that people yeah. are willing to start sharing yeah. and working together and collaborating. And I'm like, if this can just keep on, keep on moving, that will be yeah, definitely super cool, man. Um, what, um, what is a champagne moment for you in 12 months time? Ooh. Champagne will- moment in 12 months. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, having a mortgage. Yeah, buying. This, is, this sounds yeah, sounds yeah. pretty weird. But um, you know, for us, we know where we want to be now. Yeah. Um, we've we've wandered enough. This is where we want to stay. This is where we want to build our foundations. This is where I want to watch my sons grow up. Yeah. And so for me to have that foundation and that 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 house that that home, um, that's next on my agenda. It's really important to me. It's really important to Georgia as well. So. Um, everything that I'm doing now is going towards getting enough cash so I can do that. I love that. What's Unless, your pain moment? Not many people would be like getting a mortgage in 12 months' time. Uh, yeah. That pretty much sums up Curtis, doing things differently and uh, getting out there and um, leaving no rock unturned. I think he's just this curious creature as well. That, um, that's yeah. my driver. Yeah. Curiosity. Yeah, and... Yeah, the mortgage and, and just being curious about this industry and, and how I can help people. Um, 
Where can people, can people still buy your book? Is it still online? Nah. It is not. Nah. Amazon nah, got nah. broken, but never beaten. And it cannot be like, because I'm just looking at it here. It's like you got lots of people giving you great reviews. Curtis was really oh, easy really? getting this book out. I absolutely love <laughs> it. I read it. Not many books I read from back to front to back. I'm not Japanese. <laughs> but front. Um, <laughs> it just really puts things into perspective. And now listening to Man Search for Meaning with the whole Auschwitz things, it just gives you some context around being able to get up. Yes, things are broken right now in our economy and the way the the world is turning right now, but we're not beaten. We're pretty resi- we're the most resilient creatures on the planet. So uh maybe pick up his book and have a read. Um is there anything to finish on, bro? Um, you know, um try and remain optimistic about all this. You know, it's a it's a rough time, but it's not gonna be forever. So you know, let's um, let, let's build these communities around us so that we can, yeah, so so that we're not beaten, so that we can move forward when when the time is is right. So hang in there, everyone. Um, reach out if you need help. Absolutely, hundred percent. Reach out and and have a chat to someone if you need to. Um, we do not need those suicide rates rising. No. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a solution out there um, if you if you reached out. So. Yeah, I love everybody. I uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate your um, friendship, mate. Sixteen years. Here's to the next sixteen years, and um, yeah, just your friendship, your your love, your everything, man. Just always there for me, whether it's a text message, a phone call. So um, appreciate it, bro. Take care. Right on, bro. All right.